Hello everyone, happy new year. Welcome to yet another episode of Ring Diaries with me Fiona Mboa here at Church of Uganda Family TV where we talk about everything and anything to do with marriage. And we are starting off this year with a, 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 with a topic, a discussion with Honorable Matembe. You're very welcome. Thank you. Now, Honorable Matembe has made 48 years in marriage. And for me, it is intriguing to know how has she done it? How has she managed to make 48 years in marriage, yet at, at a, a level where most of us are giving up at a very young 10 years, 5 years, even months, people are leaving marriage. So our discussion this evening is just to understand how how she has managed to make it to the 48 years, but also to give us lessons that she has learned over the 48 years of marriage. You're very welcome again, and thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, my dear. Mm -hmm. 48 years in marriage, how has it been like? Well, this marriage has been between me and Mr. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I appear here as a, a couple. He, he would have been here with us probably, mm. but he's a bit indisposed with Senegande. Mm. So we can have it now, two yeah. of us. First of all, I'm so glad about this program, mm. about marriage at this particular time, mm. that you have come to <coughs> ask me at the beginning of this year. Yes. Yeah, I want to thank the Lord. And mm. the, the reason I think why you have been inspired or motivated to come is when you saw us at All Saints Church, yes. thanking God for making 48 years. Yeah marriage and uh, the question is how, how have you managed yes and I thank the Lord because I have managed because of the Lord okay. on my own on our own mm. particularly on my own <laughs> I I don't think I would have managed mm. okay. to walk this journey mm. And this is now, before I go further, why I want to say that every successful marriage, mm. I think it depends on the couple knowing that marriage is a God's idea. Okay. Marriage is a God's idea, mm. and therefore central your relationship is that that relationship was created by God himself. Okay. And marriage is so important to God mm. in that it is an earthly reflection mm. of the godly marriage. The okay. godly marriage which is the marriage between Jesus Christ and the church. Okay. Jesus Christ and the church. That's why marriage, family, marriage is said in the first chapter of Genesis of the Bible, and it ends with a revelation. But and once people, yes, mm. if you are a family TV from the church, mm. You need to know that in the physical, this marriage which we have in the physical mm. is a reflection mm. of the marriage, the love the couple is supposed to have. It's supposed to be the, the one reflecting God's love to, mm. the, to his people. And that's why you see I'm not a, a theologian, <clears throat> but God speaks to me. I'm not okay. a theologian, mm. but God speaks to me. Okay. And that's why if you are to see when you get this revelation that God gives me, mm. is that the marriage on us here reflects, I mean the family, our physical family in our homes here, yeah. reflects the family the godly kingdom, the kingdom family. Because as you will know, in our family here on earth, mm. we have the man, mm -hmm. 
who is the father, the husband. husband yes. You have a wife. You have the children. Okay. Now, in heaven, we have God the Father, God the Son, yeah. God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Now, God the Father up there is reflected through the husband, husband. the man. Okay. God the Son is reflected through the children we get. Okay. God the Holy Spirit is reflected through the woman the wife. Mm -hmm. You may ask me, why do you say that? Mm -hmm. When Jesus was living, he told his disciples that mm -hmm. I will not leave you alone. I will send you mm -hmm. a suitable mm -hmm. helper. Mm -hmm. okay. Who was this helper? The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when God created a man, he, he said it is not good for man to remain like this. I will mm -hmm. create for him a suitable helper. And he gave so him he gave him a woman. So the woman in the home plays the role of, of the, Holy, the Spirit. Holy Spirit as a helper. That's mm -hmm. why I tell the women, you know, you, you, you once you ask Matembe, the mind goes, <laughs> and what goes in the mind is what he tells you. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell women, you people, mm -hmm. women should know the role you have in the home. We have the role of a Holy Spirit. And before I forget, I need to tell the women listening to me, mm -hmm. the wives in homes, that to know that we are the help and we are very strong, mm -hmm. God put the battle to fight the enemy, the devil in the family. He gave it to the woman. Mm -hmm. If you read when the, the man had fallen, Yes. And God was making his curses. He told the snake, who is the devil, that I have put an enmity between you and the woman. The woman and his children. The woman will hit your head and you bite the feet. The woman. And so, women need to know that they are the ones empowered to fight the devil in their homes. When they go and sleep, the devil takes over the husband. When they sleep, the devil takes over the children. I wish they could know this kind of, of since we are now in the biblical terms. Mm. You know why the woman maybe was given this battle to fight the devil? Because she's the first one who spoke to the devil. Yes. The woman was the first one to who speak spoke to, to the idea. devil, and so God said, I will put an enmity, and you, woman, and the children of women, of women, would defeat the devil. Now, I want to now take this into the heavenly realm and tell you that it is the son of Mary, a woman the mother of Jesus, mm. without the participation of the man that <laughs> defeated the devil on the cross. I, you know, I get this revelation. God gives me this revelation. I'm not a, a reverend, mm. but God gives me this revelation. Because when God was saying, I put an enmity between, between you, the woman, man. and the children of the woman, eh? mm. he was saying how the mother the, the son of a woman, Mary, the mother of Jesus, would defeat Jesus. the devil. But so does that mean that um, the roles we play in our marriages are very important to make the marriage work? Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing is this. If you are a helper, mm -hmm. that means without you helping, this man is helpless. I mean... You, you, I think people yeah. will be laughing, but we shall go as to how I manage. But by talking, you can even see how the ability. How, uh, mm. Because God created a man, and he looked at him. Mm. God created a man. The reason why God created a man, according to my own revelation, mm. was that after God had created everything, and he saw that everything was good, Mm. Eh? Yes. Then 
he could he said who will thank us who will praise us who will appreciate us number one mm -hmm. number two who will rule over these things mm -hmm. number three god was looking for a relationship you know god is relational yes. god the father god the son god the holy spirit mm -hmm. and he wanted to relate with his creation mm. and so he creates this man he wants him to thank him and praise him and glorify him who doesn't want to be thanked when they do good things <laughs> you know why Everyone, we want to be thanked yeah. when we do good things yeah. and we are hurt when we are not thanked yeah. because we are created in the image of god right. and, and so god said hey, who we appreciate yeah i think we should create so they created a human being in their own image to, to rule, to thank them, to rule the creation, and to relate with them. But mm -hmm. guess what? After creating this man, when God came in the garden to see this man, the man was not speaking. The man was just there like a statue. <laughs> I mean, it was all, all you could do is to get his fruits and eat and them, yes, yes. and nothing else. And God said, no, it's not good for man, for man to, to be remain alone. alone. Because he was not realizing the purpose the for which he was okay. created. Okay. And if you read the scripture, in fact, God did not mandate, he did not give any role to the man except getting the fruit and eating them. Said is a garden, eat mm -hmm. the fruit in the garden. By then he had not created the woman. Yes. And so the man was there like a statute, he's not talking. He's... <laughs> so God could not tell him other responsibilities. But you wait a minute. And After the creating the woman, eh? mm. the woman from where? From the side of man. Not from the, the toe, not from the bottom, not from the back, the way they want to keep us there behind. Not mm. from the head even, the way also women want to be on top. No, from mm. the rib, from mm. the side of the man. Mm. And moreover, from a rib. A rib is a hard substance than clay. Mm. Because when you are looking for a suitable helper, you don't again look for the weaker for one. Because the clay know. was weak and <laughs> therefore the bone is hard and tough mm. and, and it came from the side of the man. the man and you know what as soon as the man saw the woman by her his side life entered he became complete life life entered him he spoke woman of my flesh flesh of my flesh bone of my bone he burst into a poem somebody who could not speak <laughs> a woman made him speak i wish people could know what a woman is the woman made him speak, and, he, and God saw that now life was there. So women bring life. Okay. They bring life. They complete the man. They complete, mm -hmm. you know. They bring meaning. As to soon the as man. the woman came on, life came in, meaning came in, completeness came in, and then God saw that this is very mm -hmm. good. And you know what he said? He gave them the role to do. He said, okay, now that, now that my creation complete. is complete. Mm -hmm. A woman is a perfecter of God's creation. God's creation was perfected and God was very happy and said, okay, now I give you roles. Now you too go produce and multiply. The responsibility of procreation was handed over to man because a woman had come. Okay. You get it? And then he said, go and rule everything that I have created. When you see these people say, women are not rulers. Women, what are they talking about? God himself said, you too, go and, go and rule. You too, go and procreate our children. I'm, I'm bringing you here. We shall go to discuss the other thing in detail. To see how important a woman is in the sight of God. How important a woman is in the sight of God. And it is very important for both men and women to know what a woman is and what she can do. Even in our culture, in our culture, when somebody has not married, 
when, even if she builds a mansion, they said, you see that house? That is John's house. Mm -hmm. That is John's house. When he marries tonight, tomorrow they say, do you see that? That is John's home. That it is just John's automatically home. becomes a it, home. It shifts. It, it becomes a home. So are so, we failing in our so responsibility? The, 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 when we get to understand, when a woman knows who she is mm. in the sight of God, and when the man knows this helper, who she is in the sight of God, and follow the responsibility, God even says, do this, do this, mm. then the marriage mm. as a, and the family as an institution which was specifically created by God for a purpose, a very huge purpose. Without the family, there are no children. Without the family, what is there without the family? And I want to tell the people listening to me that it is very, it is almost, it is extremely sad to succeed at public life. You get everything you want in public, but you fail at the family level. Because Marakai, in Marakai, I think this chapter three says that the reason why God made man and woman one in flesh and one in spirit was that they may rear godly offspring for him. So the mm -hmm. moment you enter into a marriage, you are not going there to just enjoy sex, to just enjoy friendship only, to just, mm. you have a purpose to, to, rear to raise up godly mm. children, godly offspring for God. So central to the access of marriage, one needs to know that marriage is a covenant. It is not just an agreement between him and his husband, mm. her husband. It is a covenant between them and God. Now, I was giving you the general picture before I bring you into my journey of marriage. No, but that alone also explains a, a bit of how and why you have met <clears throat> the 48 years. Yes, maybe making the 48 years, yes. but it doesn't mean that this marriage was, I, that I knew all that at, at the, the beginning. beginning. Yes. It doesn't mean that I knew all that at the beginning. Mm. That's why I tell people generally that we need to know that marriage, first of all, I compare it as a garden of, of roses. Mm. Not as, a, not as a, a, a bed. Not as a bed of roses. But a garden. But a garden. Because mm. a bed, you, you pick roses and put them here. Mm. But a garden, a garden of roses. Roses are very beautiful. You know, they are very costly. Everybody wants roses and that mm. kind of thing. They are very beautiful. Just like people crave for marriage mm. because they love it. They, they love the flowers. Yes, yes. And the, yeah. But those flowers, that garden has got thorns. Mm. It has got bushes, yes. thistles and thorns and bushes and what, stems mm. and so on. Mm. So, what you need to do is to, to nurture, it is prune mm. and trim mm. and make sure that you nurture the garden, you cut the thorns, you cut the bushes, mm. you, you manure the garden. Mm. And uh, this doesn't mean that at times the thorns don't prick you. At mm. times the thorns will prick you mm. as you try to cut. But if you leave the garden to, to, Just to, go to grow mm. and and bushes are more than roses and the thorns grow more than the roses, then the, the marriage will, will fail. They will not produce roses. Mm, the, you just the, have a the bush bushes there. and thorns and uh, whatever. You trim, you prune, you, you, you focus. Mm. You focus at the roses. How shall I get roses? Mm. Eh? In order to get roses, you must nurture that garden. So marriage That's needs right. work. It needs, it needs to understand what it is. It needs work, and the work must be both of you. Secondly, marriage is a journey. Mm. It is a journey. It's a lifetime journey. Mm. When, of course, when I was swearing in church, 
I don't think I knew what I was doing. Mm. By the way, me, I married when I was 21, 22, between 21 and 22. Wow. And my husband was 30 years. Mm. Mm. Was it that young? And right I, was young. So I was young. Uh, those days at our time, at mm. our time, in fact, when you go like beyond 21, too, 22, mm. oh, she's too old. Mm. So I was at the university. I was finishing my second year. Okay. That's when I married. So when I was, we didn't even date for long. You, you see, this man came with, I, I already say that I was uh, overtaken, you know, <laughs> overtaken without sitting and really thinking and considering. Mm. I wouldn't tell you that I really gave a, a thought, a mm. serious thought to marriage. Never at all. I never gave a serious thought to marriage. It was like, you can imagine at that year, then mm. this man comes. An opportunity then comes. And it was not even an opportunity. I don't uh -huh. think I looked at it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Me, I never, I never thought about marriage. I never prayed for marriage. I never thought about it. Okay. At our, and me, I'm telling at that time, mm. when the parents are there, the relatives are there, they are moreover eyeing some girl. There's mm. a girl here. There is a... They, they find a way of connecting me. Yeah, this family they and say, the oh, family. Not the family, but even friends and relatives, they say, oh, that, that girl is there mm. at that time. Okay. And so the, the man comes with all, because I will tell you what was very strange. When I first met the, this man, mm. my husband, mm. when I met him, I think it was it the next day. He told me, uh, by the way, I, 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 I want to marry you. I and laughed. It, I just touched <laughs> Like you met once and I next just day, burst out marry. in laughter. I wow. said, "Is that how they marry?" I mm. uh, I laughed it off because me I had not thought about marriage. I didn't even. And she meets me the next day when he comes and picks me. Says, "By the way, I I want to marry you." I laughed and said, "This is not serious. Uh, is that is that how they marry?" Mm. But imagine seven months down the road, we we wait. But, the, you know, it was like oh. pressure. It was like all the relatives. Now the moment he told the, his relatives, somehow they are related also to my side, you know. It was <laughs> a roller coaster. So it was, I remember one time when my, my, whenever I would say we are out and we meet there and I say, you, I want to go. Even, can you imagine even my cousin would drive me here. And, you know, he was a brewer. <laughs> He was a brewer making beer. Mm. And so all these uncles, and when they, my young uncles, they, the same age, when they saw, ah, they wanted to come and drink beer. <laughs> when are we going to Port Bear? <laughs> so you just go? <laughs> they just go in there. He comes and picks us, takes them to drink beer. And for them, they are enjoying they're their enjoying. beer. And for me, I'm there. I don't even understand what is going on. So you couldn't so stand were, in that way. <laughs> so they were, you know, from the other side, from the other side, they, they were like, oh, then their cousin, his cousin also was saying, ah, you've got the right person now. Mm. You know, me, my life is tough. Mm. There is no long time to, to, to discuss how I was brought up and be sure you will not get pregnant before mm. marriage and so on. But anyway, in short, is we, we, we met, dated for, for what, five, seven months. And then we, we, we waited within those seven months. So between meeting and, and, and wedding, it was seven months. Yes, very short, but for him, he came knowing what he wanted from me. Yes. I, I, I didn't even know. That's why I tell you that why I bring in God in these marriages, that for me, for me as a person, me as Miriam Atende, I don't want these people listening to, to, to get it wrongly, mm -hmm. but I would say that for me, the, the marriage, the kind of marriage which I expected mm -hmm. as a person, expected that one that one died i think at four months that one which i expected mm. i think died at four months but i want to say the one may be the god the god ordained, the ordained for me yes the one the god ordained for me mm. is the one which has reached 48 years. years out oh. of my statement I would say that most of the things that kill these marriages are expectations. Mm. Expectations. Our expectations. Because me, I was expecting wonderful, good life. Mm. I had not known I'd been reared, you know, a Christian family. You know, you were, you, you know, good manners, good mm. manners. 
I was not drinking. Well behaved girl. I was a well behaved girl. Mm. I was not drinking. So I was expecting when I married this man would treat me like, you know, a princess. Queen, yes. One, mm. one, what? Within four months, for me, what I had expected, what I had longed for, pew. And I can't tell you how many times in, in in, in the physical, in the physical, I think I, I packed once <laughs> to go. Once to go. <laughs> I went for three months one time. Really? But in the spiritual, hmm. I kept packing. <laughs> packing, packing to go, packing to go. Even, and then God even just... I think even for, at, even I think at 46, I was packing in the spiritual to go. Hmm. <laughs> so, I'm telling you all these people will say, but this Matembo is so bad. But th this is the truth. No, that is reality. We've got to tell people the, the truth. truth. Yeah. Because they will not come and say, we want to make it like Matembo for 48 years. Do you know, know what, what I went through? through. Eh? So, one thing, when you bench it on God, and I wouldn't tell you that I prayed for Mary because I didn't, was not saved. I mm. didn't even... It was not at all in my mind. So when, oh, marriage people, my cousin, oh, he was, a, you know, these women were showing, oh, there is this one, there is this one confusing you. Hmm. So when this man came, he, he was known to both my side and the, and the, because his cousin, his first cousin had married my first cousin. Mm, but so the family knew each but, other. No, but I didn't know him. I was still young when the other people married. I didn't know him. I think he had gone even to study. So when he came and met me, actually we met at his, their cousin's wedding, Kasichi, mm. bachelor's party. Mm. Their cousin was used to be my classmate at Weranyanji. So I went there as a classmate. Then we meet there. Then, you know, so when people say, oh, these ones are now boarding. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody was promoting it, was pushing it <laughs> forward. And in the end, I used I usually tell him that I was lifted off my foot without knowing or understanding. Not swept off like no, these swept. days you were lifted. I, I think, no, sure, <laughs> you know, without knowing, without, but there, what is amazing is that in a situation like that, mm. to see that there is this celebration of 48 mm. years of marriage. It eh? clearly can it only It clearly be shows mm. that it is possible, especially what I want to say, especially when I think whether without praying or not, when God mm. is in it yes, for you. Yes. You know this God we serve, it is always said that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called his purpose. What am I coming to? God calculated for me, God had a purpose for my life. Because I remember one time when I had finished politics and I went, I was in America for five months, I had time to reflect, meditate, and I was asking God many questions and I was saying, but God, why did you bring me this man into my mm -hmm. life? You know, God simply answered that he brought me in my life so that I may be who I am. And he brought me into his life so that he may be where he is. I said, what? And then God opened opened the curtain and I saw this. So I want to tell you that for me, if I did not, if I got a, a different a husband who was not mm. Matembe, you would not be. I wouldn't be married now. Why am I saying this? This man is irrespective of whatever, whatever, whatever challenge mm. I faced. He has never never interfered with my freedom. I have a hundred percent freedom mm. to do what I want 
that doesn't mean that I do wrong things. Yeah, yeah, the freedom makes you do wrong things. Be- no. Because if you get time to interview him, when he, he met me, he found that I was actually a good person. No liar. No, no, no. Yokwana. No, nothing. He knew for me once I am, that's who I am. What you see is and what so, I am. And so he had trust. 100 trust, 100% trust in me. So he knows that for me, when I go to work, it's about the work. And mainly this work is a work for empowerment. My struggle, which God gave me, was gender equality and women's empowerment. To struggle, to fight for the rights of girls and women. And that one you would come and ask me because it is another story together. Yeah. Because that's the purpose for which God created me. And it was, it sprang from a childhood dream of my lived experience. So if I had married, I have lived a purposeful life. The courses I studied, the jobs I did, they have all been focused, very purposefully focused. And so God brought into my life this man who would not in any way interfere. interfere with your God given with my God given purpose to serve. And so he brought me there. Whether he for uh, there is many challenges which I will not list here, for which I was packing, for which the marriage <laughs> died at four months. Mm. Eh? With all that notwithstanding, mm. the fact that he gave me my freedom amazingly. And he never questions what have you been doing? Where are you coming from? Why are you doing this? interfering, stopping you to run God's purpose. And I want, therefore, to say that when God has a purpose for you, eh, mm. he will bring into your life somebody, and uh, when we are talking about marriage, mm. he will bring in your life somebody who will facilitate you. Not only does he not interfere with my freedom, but he supports the cause, the cause, supporting the cause. Imagine, you see, for me, my husband, like today, as if the gate is mine, you, he just <laughs> sees people. They are those, they, did you expect somebody at the gate? Mm. This is, the garden, this garden has been the place, has been what? And, and when I would say, oh, my, fi- my women friends are coming. Okay. When they are coming, oh, meet them as if they were friends for a long time, where he comes them here, supports them. Now, everybody who comes here or who knows my marriage will tell you the best man on earth is who? Is Matembe. It's only me who can <laughs> know the challenges mm. I've gone through. Mm. What? Because he supports somebody who supports when they say tomorrow. The women's movement, they want to come here and, and have tea and have a fellowship. Mm. No asking for permission. The women's movement are coming. Okay. You may just see vehicles arriving, they are coming. Hey, who are they? I say, oh, I forgot, I forgot to tell to you, tell. the women are coming here. And he comes and meets them and embraces wow. them. He has got awards from FIDA, from women's movement, from what? For supporting the movement. So the 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 summary I want to get out of what I'm saying mm. hmm, is women they need in and men I don't know men since men they say our bosses and they are strong and so on for us we are downgraded and reverted mm. for the other one I will advise the, the women and the men I will tell them also women need when they get into this marriage, they need to know that it is a journey mm. which will take them through rivers, mm. can take you through mud, it can take you through oceans, it can take you through deserts, it can take you through all sorts. Like when you are on the road, does yeah, it take you on smooth road only? Mm. And by the way, people should be careful of smooth marriages. Smooth roads are dangerous. dangerous. You know very well when the roads have just been repaired. Mm, you know accidents. how many accidents <laughs> take place. There very is a need to, to reach, you know, a, 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 a pothole eh? or a hump and then stop and engage another gear and, and be able to move afresh. 
they must know that it is that journey. I got it because when I reached there, what I expected is not what I saw. And either I had to pack and go, or I had to be there knowing that this one is a covenant, this one is something which I entered for life, this one is something for God which I must realize. And so, I must hold on to God. Mm. They should not just say, ah, biganye, biganye koze wochi. Because what <laughs> I want to say in this one is that the moment you get into marriage, like mm. I was saying, my expectations were so many. Everything was good. When you see this man smile, what, 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 what. So, but down the road, and if everything reduce. may turn bad, <laughs> everything mm. may turn bad, and that makes you see nothing good in this spouse of yours, and for that matter, you will pack. So the advice I give these people, of those good things they are seeing in their husbands as they get into marriage or in their spouses, let them pick one thing, mm -hmm. at least one good thing, and make it into a hook and hang yourself there. Because of on that, that one hook, thing, on yes. that one thing, mm. hang yourself on that one hook. Because when you are hooked there, the wind will blow. And you just hold it. When the side. water rises and the water is wanting to swim you off, you are hanging. Mm. And eventually, the clouds will go, the storm will stop, and then you continue hanging. And talk of 48 years. When you hang there for so long, on this hook, mm. you stick there so that <laughs> now you cannot, you get, off. You cannot you get off. So for me, freedom. 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 And I always tell him, a freedom to do what I wanted to do. Not to interfere with my destiny. The ability to realize my wisdom, mm. my talents, my purpose, my energy, and instead of interfering with it, support it in his own way. Because by supporting these people I work with, mm. by feeling good and happy about them, mm. by, by, entertaining uh, them. by entertaining them, even if I'm not here, I'm telling you, I have my friend Tezera Jamwa, these days he drives and comes here, I'm not here, He's, then they go in the, the chamber there, pick green, pick one. Then I come here, you are friend? And Tesla drinks me. Yes, I picked popos. I picked. <laughs> when you're not he, around. He becomes their friend. I remember one time we used to have a friend, Gachukia from, from Kenya. I was expecting her here to stay here for a night, mm -hmm. whether they are Bazung, whether they are what they car, they used to come. Mm -hmm. And then. then he said, okay. I said, you, you will, I had gone out of the country. Mm -hmm. Now I think somebody else came who was not got, got, Eda. He mm -hmm. said, oh, Eda, you are most welcome. <laughs> because he you was expecting, expecting Eda. Mm -hmm. So that, those two things, those two things, mm -hmm. not interfering and again giving support by, you know, and even when I was doing the in parliament, mm -hmm. whenever women would come here, with problems, and I'm out of the country. If this mm. woman is from Nyabushozi, Nike would go with this woman and take look for Karhanga, Honorable Karhanga, the member of parliament, wow. and say, you, you help this woman, because Honorable is not here. If she was wow. from Isinjiro, he would look for Chijaji as a member of parliament, and I say, is the, if she's from Ivanda, you would look for Ravita, the late Ravita, and say, this is the what woman. Is so she, she picked it. He took it as his cause. That cause which I was fighting for, he mm. took it as his cause. And this is one thing I want to advise men. Mm. And then we shall come as to why these marriages are breaking. One thing I want to advise men mm. is that they should be able to perceive their wives as their suitable helpers. Whether they prayed for them or not. Because at my time I didn't pray. pray yeah. But as I said, everything, God works everything together for the good of those who love him and accord to his purpose. Central to that is that we need to know God. We need to know God and love God. 
and know his purpose. And when that is the situation, whether you never prayed for this man or this woman and she just came like mine, we just came, mm. when you know God in the matter and when you are serving his purpose, he will make things work together for, for you to succeed. And so for the men, I want to tell them, they should not underrate these, these, these women. They just yeah. think she's a woman. She's just a woman. She's helper. Helper. I want to tell the people listening to me that when God was talking of a helper, he didn't mean somebody who just got fetch fruits only. That time there was even children. no digging, no what. Mm. He didn't mean the one who would just go to cook to wash the plates. I mean, wash man's clothes and iron them. No, what God meant was this man who was created as the head of the household was to be the vision bearer, mm. the vision bearer for the home mm. to see where they are going. Mm -hmm. You get yes, it? And then the wife is to help and assist him in achieve that achieving that vision. Mm -hmm. In achieving that vision. Mm -hmm. Therefore, men are supposed to let their women's minds free. Don't imprison their wives' minds. Mm. She's a woman, she must be home, she must cook, she must. You think, and, and you marry a horror graduate who went to class, he's a doctor like you are a doctor, she's a lawyer like you are a lawyer, or she's a lawyer and you are an engineer, she has the brains, she has the wisdom, and you think all this is supposed for cooking, yes, cook matoke, for. and ironing your shirts. Can't you pick a, a, a iron and iron your shirt? After all, men know their shirts better. And if yes, I'm to iron yes, his yes. shirt, I spoil it. <laughs> but if, uh, if he irons it, he, he irons it he well. Yes. Men don't just look at women as just the cookers to be there to cook washing machines, to wash machine, just bearing children and just stay in the kitchen. No. God gave them brains. After all, they come from you. If you think you have brains, you are an engineer and you are clever, that woman born, which came from you, has so much, so much, by the way, mm. from him. Because all this, what you, what you have, she also has because it is from you are fresh, fresh of your fresh, born of your bone. But and therefore, women they, should, they should free, they should free women mm. to let them, to let them flourish. Let me tell you a biblical scripture mm. since I'm talking to, to the family TV mm. of the Church of Uganda. Mm. You know, there is this woman called Deborah, yes. the judge Deborah was the judge of the Israelites at that time when this Sisera, the command of who, who is this man, was disturbing and fighting the Israelites. Right, yeah. Now, the commander of Israel's army was called Barak. Mm -hmm. And Deborah told Barak, Barak, go, rest yourself and go and fight Sisera. You are mm -hmm. going to defeat him. Mm. But Sisera was so tough, I think he was maybe like Gorias. I don't know, Gorias could have been more tougher. But Sisera was really disturbing the but Israelites, Israel, and they yeah. were suffering. Mm. So I think Commander Barak was fearing him. Now mm. Commander Barak looked at him and said, <laughs> said, My dear manage. Deborah, I can't, unless you go oh, with me, mm. I can't go alone, because mm. I cannot manage it's alone. Mm. And Deborah said, my friend, I told you to go now. If I go with you, the battle will be won by a woman. Yeah. Did you see Baraka refuse? Baraka said, fine. Me, what I would want rather the battle to win the one. battle mm. than going there and, and be defeated, defeated without you, woman. Mm. And indeed, as the scripture goes, it is not even, even Deborah who beat who killed uh, Sisera. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a rural woman called Jair. Mm. Why? And what this, the, the message it brings this, is that when women rise up to battle, mm. 
when one woman rises up to battle, when she's in unison with other women supporting everyone, then the battle will be won. So may I tell men, please, recognize that talent in your wife. Recognize that energy. Recognize the wisdom. Treat her as your suitable helper, who God created and brought from your side. The fact that you must live side by side with one another, side by side with one another. You didn't say, you, have you ever seen my husband quarrel? At times they even, one time I was so shocked mm. because when the NRM government had come, mm. I had, you know, I, I got onto the public platform with such fiery, I was a fiery brand of a person mm. that everybody had to know there was Matembe somewhere. Oh, yeah. mm. And then I had, by the time I reached parliament, of course my noise had gone all over the place. Mm. And then one time the Uganda breweries, they were having a show, the usual show on the showground. Mm. And they went and President Museven went to the show. So when he was moving at the show, he saw he reached the Uganda breweries. And he met their Matembe. Because they were in Intari. Mm. He had seen him with the wine in Tari, but mm. Nick was behind. Okay. So as soon as he saw him, he said, he, he saw him and greeted him. And then he turned around and said, You people, his, his delegation, the convoy he was with, mm. you people, this is the husband of Matembe. <laughs> Remember, this was Matembe. Yes, he said, his name, he said, now it's the this is the husband of Matembe. Mm. Let me tell you why I say I was shocked or surprised. Any other man would have would got have angry, angry yes. would have got Taken angry offense. and said this man. How can she say I'm, I'm the, the husband, husband of the when it is my name? And in fact, those who were at the factory, at the show before I even went there, they were saying, but this man, he's reducing you to nothing. How can he say you are the husband when he knows you are the Matembe? Mm. So when I reached there before, I, I, saw, I saw Nick. He, he, this, I met some of the men. He said, ah, you man, because I passed there to see myself. You man, yeah, now they are calling the husband of Matembe, the husband of Matembe. And I was also scared. I said, e, but Museven, how could he do this? <laughs> but do you know how, how Matembe received it? Mm. When I, when I came and we were there, I said, you know what? Hey, today there was something wonderful. I said, what is it? He said, you see, when M7 reached here and he saw me, eh? mm. and he, he turned he turned around and said, you people, this is the husband of, mm -hmm. of Matembe. I said, but what could he say you are the Matembe? He said, no. You know, for him, he's clever. He wanted to show these people. That that woman whom you see, whom you call fiery, whom you think she's just there disturbing, she has a husband. Do you see how he interpreted wow. it? He yes, said she, she has a husband. So, you know, so that they may not underrate that you, is, you know, <laughs> that they may not underrate you and think oh, that you are cantankerous. Yeah, because yes. at that time they were saying she's going to destabilize marriages, she's disturbing families. That's the perception the, the public had. Have. But for him, he knew that was not the case. And so she, the attitude, you see, let me tell you, the attitude of the mind, that's why I was even at the beginning, I told you that our mind is the cause. The attitude which we have in our mind can it's either break or, or destroy. Because for him, his attitude was, that was a positive statement, that and it was made so in order to support me mm. so that I may be able to do my work. Yes, you remember what I want to negative. bring. Others can look at it as negative. Mm. But what I want to say, you remember when, why David killed Goliath? Mm. It was the attitude of the mind. Mm. It was the attitude. The general, all these Israelites saw Goliath as too big, big to hit. But David, with his stone, saw Goliath as too big. huge. To mm. miss. Mm. Why is he calculated and so this it's huge thing? So my crazy. stone, I will direct it at this big head and it will knock the head. The attitude, the attitude. And this attitude is the one now which causes this breakdown of marriages. Mm -hmm. Especially the culture, the cultural and customary attitude of the men looking at women 
as secondary class citizen. Mm. You are a woman. You, you. you women are women. Mm. So what? Men are mm. men. And you know these days they say the, the boy was neglected, the boy child has been neglected, and Hello. they accuse me for neglecting <laughs> the boy and child. And emphasizing on the girl, on the girl child. child. Yes. And I, I, you know how I defeat them? I say, do you know why we came to fight for the girl child? Because all factors were marginalizing mm. and discriminating a girl okay. child and minimizing her as she's not a full child, a full human being in her own right. But there is nothing that discriminates against a boy child. You go to the customs and culture, emphasizes the importance the and the superiority man. of a girl, a boy, and a man. You go to religion, religion emphasizes the superiority of the, of the boy and the man. You go to the law, the law discriminates against, <laughs> against women and not to the boy child. You look at the economy, the, the economic power belongs to the man. And, to, and not to the what? To the woman. Not to the woman. Now you go to ignorance. Ignorance impacts on the girl because going to school belongs to the boys. Studying the relevant courses belongs to the boys. So for us, when we came to fight for the girl, we wanted her also to be treated as a full human being. The, the, the unfortunate thing we did was that we didn't recognize that the new teaching, the empowering of the girl, child, and the woman right. is going to impact negatively on the boy and the man. Because their cultural training did not change. Did not change. For them, they kept imagining, I am a man. The egoistic attitude of being a man and the superior in brains, in energy, in everything. Eh? which is not true, which was a bias, which is a misconception, the misconception that has been brought by that egoistic attitude that women are weak, women are, are slow, women are, are, are not brainy, women, it is a lie, it is a lie. And that lie has not been broken among the men and the boys. And so while it is not broken, they maintain that egoistic attitude, I am a man, without even reflecting and dissecting what a man means. Oh, They're just a man. Mm -hmm. Don't you know I'm a man? We, 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 what is a man? What is a man? And, and, and when God was saying a man, are they now, are the women now, are the women now men the vision bearers? They have failed to bear vision. Now, if, for instance, the, the, the scripture says, submit, submit to the man. Mm. Submit. Does submit mean subjugation? Submission does not mean subjugation. Submission was, God was looking at it as a marriage is an institution like any other institution. Mm. Every institution has a leader. Mm. And when it has a leader, the leader is the one to guide and the others, like That's the peers, like the commissioner, like that, that doesn't make them less of intelligent mm. people than the, the, the minister mm. or the managing director who is the boss. Mm. So submission does not mean subjugation. And secondly, submission means that you, the man, you are playing your role effectively. And, and therefore, mm. this one submits you and you follow and gives guidance to your vision and the vision succeeds because you are running it together. Mm. But here is a man who is there because he has been trained in a way that he is a man and he's not told what makes him a man, and he comes and meets this girl who that has vision. been who, who <laughs> has a vision, who has been empowered, has studied, has finished her course, he has a purpose in life, he has a vision, and he finds this man who has a no purpose, a who is just there meandering, and they say, submit, 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 shall we go anywhere? If I submit to this <laughs> man and follow him, are we going well, anywhere? Um, are we going anywhere? So for that matter, what is breaking these marriages? I see people blaming women. Blaming women. Blaming Matembe's women. You know, those are Matembe's women. And I say, I've never been a lesbian. 
how can these women be my women? Even the Zibian came yesterday, but how can they be my women? But because they have got to know who they are, they've been empowered, and they come across this man who has been empowered theoretically in the mind by being told that he is a man, and a man is a man, uh, without dissecting it and see what a man is and who he is and what he should do. And he expects this woman to follow this man who has, ni who has no direction. There are two alternatives. Either the woman will lose will direction lose her, and go, or the man will <coughs> understand that actually, if I support this woman, we shall run a better journey and marriage. Yeah, but this is not to say that some people, there are exceptions to the rule. Some women are also cantankerous and impossible. Yes, but yeah. but me, like everybody would say, I'm so that difficult, I'm so cantankerous, I'm so <laughs> impossible, I'm so what, but how come? Even you people say, even people yeah. say, but how does Matembe manage this? And when they see, they are so excited, to this understand. is the man. But how does he manage this woman? And that's why I tell them, Matembe did not need to manage, manage me. me. Mm. You don't manage a person in the marriage. You manage the marriage. You manage the marriage as an institution. You don't manage the, the person individual. in the marriage. The person in the marriage, your spouse, need love mm. and need understanding and support. That's so true. if Matembe supports, understands me, and supports me, and then I can't be cantankerous to fail to do what? <laughs> to sustain the marriage. Then together, we manage the marriage. But I can assure you, it has not been a smooth <coughs> journey. Hmm. If you called him, he has also had challenges. You, know, This woman and Matembe is from Igara. Those who are in Igara, they are very tough, strong people. Hmm. They would not manage a person I like me. But I'm not prepared to be managed. Hmm. I'm not ready to be managed. And so, if we decide and manage the marriage, we can then, work together. But in, in the totality, eventually down the road, when I came to know Jesus as my personal savior, when I came to know Jesus as my personal savior, mm. things became better okay. and better. The, the parking that was there in the, in the spirit permanently, <laughs> It got off, Down. Mm. and I said, yeah, this is God's covenant. I'm and here I'm to going stay, to make it and work. God, and I cannot tell you many times. I remember one time, why it was after COVID. I, it, it was something like, oh, quarrel, and then I said, oh, my God, enough is enough. What can I do, Jesus? And immediately he said, yeah, in scripture, it is there, it says, don't worry, don't fear. Warm Jacob, I personally will help you. Oh my God, I said, Oh God, he's in personally going are, to come. You are and personally help me. helping me. We are done. Thank you very so much. So I trust these mm. people, even when they are not saved, let them know that it is a covenant with God. Yes. Let them know that it is possible. Mm. If for me, the most so-called <laughs> cantankerous, can make controversial, yes. difficult person can be able to balance the public life. And the Having man. gone and reached, you know, being a minister, an African parliament all over the place, and having a successful man. family of four sons, four biological sons, and yet so many daughters whom God gave me, mm. and they are very well married, the way they care for their wives. When I see my sons, I feel so proud. If you ask me, what is it that gives you joy now that everything has become past, 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 former, former, what is it that gives me joy? What gives me joy is that I'm a favored child of God mm -hmm. with very happy family, with children who are married and they have grandchildren and yes. I even have twins, I say glory to God. Even if he takes me home today, mm -hmm. I would always raise him high mm -hmm. and say thank you to God. Wow. Thank you very much, hey. Honorable. I think through this story, I know that you've been picking something out there, picked a lot, 
one of the things is men we need to have vision so that people can follow us then we need to be able to love support nurture that the, the helper that god has put in your life and i'm hoping all of us have been able to pick a thing or two to make our marriages work one and, and as she concluded if she has done it for 48 years you can also do it but be sure to know that marriage is a covenant it's not about you it's not about who you've married now that you're together this is about making this work for the glory of god thank you very much for watching us i'm fiona mboa here at church of uganda family tv with ring diaries